Good afternoon. We're going to give just a moment to clear the waiting room and make sure that everyone has connected to audio and can hear us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Waiting room is cleared so we can get started. Good afternoon. This is an administrative hearing before the Mayor's Office of Consumer Affairs and Licensing. Today is Thursday, March 7th, 2024. This hearing is being conducted pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. This hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the City of Boston's website. We're joined today by the Executive Director of the Mayor's Office of Consumer Affairs and Licensing, Kathleen Joyce, and Director of Operations, Rebecca Fu. I will read uh, today's agenda item into the record. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the applicant. You'll make a brief presentation regarding your proposal, followed by questions by the Entertainment Division, and there will be an opportunity for testimony, beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Uh, for members of the public, please limit your testimony to two minutes, and please state your name, address, and affiliation, if any. The item before the Entertainment Division this afternoon is KCL Boston, LLC, doing business as F1 Arcade, located at 87 Pier 4 Boulevard. And Tories. Is to add the entertainment categories of audio device, TVs, automatic amusement devices, and disc jockey daily until 1 a.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Elizabeth Pisano from Optin, Connell, and Devlin on behalf of the applicant. This is an application for live entertainment at F1 Arcade at 87 Pier 4 Boulevard. They're seeking an audio device in DJ, nine TVs, one projector screen, and 69 race car simulators. The proposed hours on the license are Monday through Wednesday, 10 a.m. to 12 a.m., Thursday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 1 a.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, we met with the Seaport Neighborhood Association back in December, on December 6th, um, and they gained uh, we gained their support for both the entertainment and the liquor license application, which, as you know, has gone through and received final approval. Um, with me today is John Gardner. He is the president of F1, and Nicholas Phelps is the proposed manager of record. And we are happy to answer any questions that you have. Oh, thank you. Um, so I was re reading the materials that were submitted um, and you did have a meeting with um, the local, the Seaport neighbors, is that right? Yes. Can you talk to me about some of their concerns with, um, you know, the lobby area and crowds gathering um, and some of the sound mitigation concerns they had? Sure. So they were concerned about crowds gathering outside the door on the side entrance, um, but we assured them that there will never be people waiting outside because you'll enter into the side door and people will use the staircase to go upstairs because the space is on the second floor. So that's where IDs and everything will be checked would be inside. So there will never be crowds gathered on the outside on the street level. Um, and the same thing for the sound mitigation. Um, again, it's on the it's not on ground level. It, it's on the second floor and there's no direct access to the street. So um, you won't you know, you won't be able to hear anything from street level. Um, and also, let me just pull this up. Um, the landlord has put in top quality materials in this new building to ensure sound mitigation. Um, the AV systems are um, designed to control and mitigate the loudness and it monitors it. So basically, if it goes over 50 decibels, the system will alert the staff. Um, and another thing is their lease has strict clauses about a specific noise level and no vibration clauses. So there are many things in place to make sure that Tron doesn't travel, travel to other floors and it there's no direct access to the street. So it won't, you know, disturb any neighbors outside. Okay. So I appreciate that. That's interesting. I have never heard about the automatic alert system, um, but should other issues arrive with sound, sometimes it was like vibration issues or whatever. How would someone contact um, the business? Would it be, is there like a uh, a person in charge, like an email or a phone number that people could use to contact them in real time? Definitely, definitely. I think we could 
Um, hey, I'm sure John and Nicholas and I can talk about who's the best person to contact at any time. Um, Nicholas is going to be there 40 plus hours a week. So, um, if he's comfortable with that, you know, we can, we can have him as a contact. I don't know which specific number to give, but we can definitely, um, give the board a number or however you propose that we, um, have that number available and contact available. Okay. And then can you speak a little bit about, um, are people charged per hour? How, how does that work? John, I'll let you take this one. Yeah, by all means. Um, yes, yeah, so the pricing model, there's a couple different ways that you can actually experience F1 Arcade. Um, there are head-to-head -head racing for smaller groups, which are done in three or five races. So you'll make a booking, typically. You can also walk in off the street. Uh, and that'll be done. So for three races, it's around 28 minutes. And for five races, it's about 45 to 50 minutes. And then for larger groups or larger events, um, that will last around 90 minutes, depending on how large the group is. And... Um, those are the three main, then obviously private events and things like that are all separate. But hopefully that's a, any okay. questions around that. I know it's a little bit vague in terms of how that goes. No, that's fine. But are so are people allowed to just watch and not participate? Absolutely. You can come in. So there's, yeah, with the bar and the, the food that we're serving as well, we definitely welcome walk-ins off the street. Okay. Um, and then what is the capacity on the floor? Um, What's the capacity for the rooms or I'm not sure how it's broken down. The oh, I can pull that right up. Um sorry, one second. Was the question around occupancy? Is that what it was? Total occupancy for the building. Yeah, the capacity that's allowed on this <laughs> it's only one floor, the second floor, right? It's a it's a jump lobby. So yes, it's 500 square feet on the first floor and 15,500 on the second floor. So majority second level. Um, and I believe we're at 550. If, um, but Elizabeth, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, time. sorry. I don't know why my computer is like freezing right now. Hold on. I can tell you in two Always seconds. Always the perfect time, doesn't it, when, when that happens? Like, I don't understand. Everything was up. <laughs> Um, so the, yes, yeah, so the occupancy is 489. The total square footage, John, I have is, um, well, this was for the first and second floor, but the first floor is 680 square feet. Second floor is, um, almost 14,000 square feet and the occupancy is 489. It's, it's, yeah, it's all depends on how the landlord calculates the square footage and things like that. So what what's usable and what we're being charged for is I guess all, all part of the fun game as you guys, uh, know. Hmm. Yeah. And then um, a security plan, um, a dispersal plan, and emergency and operation plan. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. So, I, John, I can go into it, or if you want to go into yeah, it. Yeah, go, go for it. Let me Nick, Nicholas can like, jump in. Is anything else? Okay. Detail around that. Um, so, there will always be um, uh, security at the front door where you exit from the street there'll be somebody uh, at the bottom of the stairs and then checking IDs and then when you go up to the top where you'll be greeted by um, a host I guess you could say that's where you'll be able to enter through um, there will always be several managers on duty um, and um, there shouldn't I mean there'll be security on the first floor and like I said outside so there shouldn't be any large crowds or gatherings and if there ever is then the security would make sure that people filter in appropriately mm -hmm. um if there's any specific security questions we can answer them but that's basically um what we have going on and then obviously we have monitors throughout the um, camera monitors throughout the space just one clarification, Living, you're absolutely right on all that. I just, just in terms of, so Monday through Wednesday, we typically wouldn't have security through, through the entire time. As again, those are not our peak times. They'll be less busy throughout that time, but peak times, absolutely. And not only that, if there ever be an issue, we would put one of our members of management outside as well to, to manage that process. So, and as we said, an extensive camera uh, system, I think we have over 60 cameras within the space. So mm -hmm. we're very much monitoring everything. Okay, so speaking of cameras, how long do they record video for? I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to answer that. Nicholas, I doubt you probably can answer that either. Yeah, not until we see the exact um, hardware that we're using to record. 
it's a digital system, so it's all it all will be stored on the cloud. Let's say um, Kathleen on that. So I would believe uh, we'll come back to you on that in terms of the, the amount of time that that stays on. But it, it's a universal system that a lot of a lot of businesses use. So I would assume that'd be a long uh, quite a while in terms okay. of. Okay. The reason I ask is um, in case there was a security incident or a police mm -hmm. response that you cooperate with police and preserve video. Yeah, um, absolutely. And sometimes you're not notified about something that happens at the license premise until, you know, 14 days afterwards. And then I'm, right. I always hear it re-recorded after 13 or something. Um, so I just would like to know something this big um, on this type of venue with this type of entertainment, uh, what that what that is. Um, Rebecca, are there any other questions that you have? Yes. Um, so if you guys could actually submit a, you know, your security dispersal emergency plan after mm -hmm. the hearing. Um, if you need a sample, I can send one. Yeah. Um, do you have some questions? So this space, are there uh, residential abutters in this building or is it just commercial, both? They're commercial in the building, they're commercial. Where's the closest residential to this? It's more than 500 feet because oh. we didn't have, we didn't even need to hold um, an abutters meeting because it's all businesses. And then um, F1, is this like the first of its kind in Boston or there's like other locations? Can you tell me a little bit more of the like concept? Try not to pitch you too hard for looking on this, but um, or it will save all of us some time for that. But yes, so this is a global partnership with Formula One. This is the first one coming to the US that we have. We've got one other site or two other sites in the UK right now trading for over a year. And then this is the very first one in the US. So we're launching big in the Boston Seaports. This is our key focus for everything that we're doing. So global partnership with Formula One is, as um, Libby mentioned, there's 69 uh, full motion active simulators that we've worked uh, to bring this from the UK over. And then there is a bar and restaurant um, of the highest quality champagne cocktail bar, and then um, a chef inspired menu that's at international flavors within that. So putting all those things together, creating a truly unique experience for the first of its kind, partnering with Formula One and bringing that to the seaport. Very cool. Um, and then can you tell me a little bit about your experience as a manager with premises like this? Um, I think well, Nicholas, if you want to go into it, he has over 10 years of experience in the food and beverage industry and in the hospitality industry. He's been manager of record, both at locations in Massachusetts and Boston and in other states. Nicholas, I'll let you go into detail on that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, uh, as mentioned, have been on record here in Boston. Mass was also um, within Chicago, Philadelphia and Texas as well. I've been in hospitality management in you know high volume, uh, high density uh, guest services for about 15 to 16 years. Um, within uh, entertainment as well as uh, dining. Uh, so pretty extensive experience in regards to dealing with bar crowds, standard dining crowds as well. Uh, and excited for the opportunity to, to share this with you guys and the combination of the simulators with that. And then your request, you have a DJ. What's the DJ for? Just background music? It's yeah. Essentially. So go ahead, John. Yeah. So yes, the, the short answer is I think past, um, you know, seven o'clock or so that it's 21, 21 years old and over uh, for that. So no kids beyond that time. So yes, it is background music. Exactly. As you said, there's no dance floor. There's nothing else um, with that. It's just to bring a little more energy into the space. Are there like special areas for private events, anything like that? There are. We do have a, um, a large private event space uh, that actually broken down into two different types of space and then semi-private areas dedicated throughout the space as it goes. But all that's flexible as well. So that can be broken up for groups, individuals, uh, mid-sized groups. So it's very versatile as we've laid it out. I believe that is all the questions I have. And you said it was 21 plus after 7 p.m. Uh, correct, that's right. Great, yep, thank you. Executive Director Joyce, any further questions? I have no further questions, thanks. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background on the community process. Um, Seaport Neighborhood Association worked directly with the proponent to resolve community concerns. 
conversation with productive and concerns such as valet and noise were mitigated. As a result, the SNA uh, voted in favor of this proposal. And due to the dynamic of the neighborhood and the seaport, it was determined that an abutters meeting was not necessary. Our office does not have any letters of support or opposition on file. With that, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you, Connor. Um, with that, the entertainment division will take this matter under advisement. The executive director will issue a written decision. This is the only matter before the division this afternoon, so that will adjourn this hearing. Thank you, everybody, and enjoy Thank the rest you. of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Have a good day.